How's it going? Not too bad. How are you? Not too bad. How can we help you? Uh, this is a new uh, coil for this one here. It's a crown three. three. Nice, yeah. bro. Okay. Do you want uh, what range do you vape in? Like about oh, one, like under one twenty. Around there. 120, well, so it's probably the two fives, the 80 to 90 watt coil. I'm not sure. Is that what it is? <laughs> Could be. Okay. We can check what's there. I think that's the 70 to 90, that one in there right now. Is that two five? No, this is the 80 to 90. Do you like this one better or the other one? I haven't had the other one. Okay. So, yeah, I just got that was the last one you guys had when we bought it. So, yeah, buddy. Yeah, yeah, that's always fun. fun. Yeah. That's yeah, the most fun. Are you at the camera post? Yeah, no. stick with oh. Yeah, it's generally yeah. the preference <laughs> one. Um. Yeah, I've been thinking like a, like a 1.5, I'm like a little bit lower. I've been vaping three for a while, but last last little bit I've been doing the 1.5. Do you have anything? We uh, we do zero and three. Zero and three? We don't have any 1.5. Okay. Uh, you could always mix. I've tried this one before. Yeah. I'll just, uh, maybe I'll take one of that. But I'll try a couple first, but yeah, I'm yeah definitely, sure. that one's really good. I like that one. The cotton candy's nice. Yeah. Colored cotton, I should say. Colored cotton? Yeah, that's what it's called now. Oh, uh, yeah? With the new laws. Oh, shit. Okay. Yeah. So I got a tester here for you. And uh, tester tips here. So nice. feel free. Cool. That's fine. No problem. All right. I'm so trying some smooth tobacco. A lot of people generally start off with a tobacco taste to mimic or simulate the act of smoking as much as they can. Yeah, that's... Uh, were uh, they doing this to all the vape shops as far as like did they just go around to every vape shop the bylaw officers or yeah. whatever they're called so bylaw just... bylaw came by they said that if we sell up more than 85 percent um e-cigarette products as far as our total sales go we could be exempted from having to basically black out everything which in our case we're good and we do have the exemption, that's why you're allowed to sample right now. So you're allowed to use my sample unit to try the flavors out, but no one is allowed to hit their own vape inside the store. And this was effective since? October 17th. So right around, wasn't that the day weed was legalized? Exactly. Do you think exact there's some sort day. of there, connection there? There definitely was a connection with it. Um, not in any way as far as the two things linking. It's just uh, the same time that they proposed Bill 174, which was the original cannabis uh, bill. Um, the e-cigarettes portion was actually on that bill as well. A lot of the local business owners for e-cigarette companies uh, fought back to their MPPs and the local government itself saying that you know, this is an industry that is helping a ton of people and mm -hmm. it's very beneficial. So there's no point to criminalizing it or punishing us for something that, you know, people are very grateful for uh -huh. having. How you doing? Is that you? Yeah? Oh, no, not bad. Okay. Yeah. Okay, have a seat. Nice. Thank you. The only thing you guys want to have those? What, for the like, sell? Yeah. No, I'm pretty sure there's a few other vape shops that have. Yeah, are they? Yeah. Well, yeah, but then I lost it because it's small. Yeah. <laughs> I can show you. Uh, so you've already had it before? Yeah, I had a jewel. I had the other, was it the vape? The another one called vape. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Options on that? Fifty-five. Versus the jewel is pretty strong, right? Yeah, the jewel is fifty-nine. That's it. Yeah, I would like because I, I did give up the cigarettes, right? So I prefer the trade one six yeah. for the other, but it's you know, kind of a bit healthier. Well, it feels better. Maybe. Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Proven, but whatever. Some of them come in boxes. Rich, creamy cigar. Yeah. This one's really good, people enjoy. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's pucker. 
Is it going like that? Or? Oh, like this. Just like that, yeah. Right. It's like blueberry pie. Uh, with the bill, well, I do find it uh, kind of frustrating uh, just because uh, there are some things that people would like to try, products, uh, and they can't necessarily try them. Uh, some of them don't know what they're buying necessarily. And, uh, well, you know, I do find it a little silly that you can't vape inside of a vape store where we're selling product for it, you know what I mean? So, um, be honest man I think the government is just doing what they love doing just having control <laughs> like you know it's just they're just like oh okay you know here uh, you know you can't do this because well we say so but in reality it's just like it's, it's the small things it's really small and they just really want to get at anything that's you know consuming consumers uh, so it's just a uh, you know it's a pain in the ass uh, really uh, always got to be controlling stuff and, you know just like I was saying just the small stuff man you know, the big stuff's already taken care of right now they're just after like this that that this that all the details and, you know it gets tiring after once in a while you know just might as well just move to the woods and just the uh, the industry itself one thing I've, I've been saying ever since I started working in the industry, I've been working for electronic cigarette stores since the age of uh, actually 18, funny enough. Um, one thing I've been saying since the industry got going in Canada is the fact that an industry like this absolutely does need regulation. I mean, the, the, the sole fact that I could have worked in one of the stores uh, for a product that realistically should be sold to people 19 or over uh, while I was the age of 18, that doesn't really seem proper to me at the time. I mean, I was happy to have a job, but you know, even then I did realize it was a little strange. Back when I did start in the industry, there was absolutely no age restrictions. Um, so anyone could walk in, anyone could purchase, uh, you know, liquid nicotine, um, which meant that, you know, potentially there could be, you know, people as young as six, seven, eight years old coming in and trying to get liquid. And there are many companies out there uh, that were operating with a 19 or over policy. Uh, we were one of them. So even before the 19 or over regulation went into play, uh, we were still IDing people and treating it as a controlled substance uh, in that sense. But uh, I do know for a fact that there were other companies that just did not care. One thing that a lot of people have a problem with right now is the no vaping inside. Now, I, I sit on the fence of, of that policy um, just because of the fact that Britain's Royal College of Physicians already released their own studies um, and their own studies are overwhelmingly positive when it comes to secondhand vapor and everything. They do say that there are trace amounts of stuff like nicotine and the chemicals and flavorings in the air, but when I say trace amounts, it's not nearly enough for uh, you know it, it to harm people whatsoever. So they can detect the stuff, but it is not nearly enough to be considered a secondhand vapor. Um, but that is Britain's Royal College of Physicians. The reason why I sit on the fence is that Health Canada's uh, position on that is that secondhand vapor does exist. And you know me being Canadian in Canada, uh, that is something you know I, I do respect. Um, and if it does happen to be the case in the future, uh, if we do figure out that there is secondhand vapor, the no vaping inside rule is just like that's unspoken for. That that makes perfect sense. Where I run into an issue with the 147, probably that in order to better educate the public on how to use said devices, those devices require use in order to be demonstrated. For example, if you have a customer who's never a big, I'm not just going to hand them the device and go, good luck. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta show them. For sure. But if you can't do it before, I have to do this before we got a license, I think. Let's step outside and I'll show you how to use it because I have to do it. Outside, I it's, it's cold, it's raining, it's snowing, not great. But, try not to give the proprietors the opportunity to take advantage of those things at a time. Again, I wouldn't dismiss it and say that it's not a cash grab. It is really a cash grab. Because it's ridiculous to assume that a business that operates solely on educating the public on how to utilize certain devices to get away from harmful products would have yeah. to use those products in order to demonstrate how they work. Because I know this for a fact. There are government employees that are in offices with their supervisors and 